Okay, I've now created an even more high energy state electric uh, and electric field antenna system. This one's using my interesting tuner slash magnetic resonator system. An additional magnetic core and inductor system. This, uh, it's complicated, but this system helps to further align all of the E vectors in this direction. And then there's this ball, which is basically a foam ball coated in alf alfoil. And then we have this uh, torus around it. Now, it's extremely high energy. Um, <laughs> so, from a LMD perspective, longitudinal magnetodielectric wave perspective, this meter, look how far I'm lighting up into the distance. Right? So, I'm going to show you a few different perspectives. So, here's my other detector. This one just uh, uses light, you know, lights. Look how far I am, and it's still lighting well. Now, um, so LMD wave, longitudinal wave, basically. So the electric field lines have to be running, let's say, between this antenna element and me, right? If, if the electric field lines get to me and this element at the same time, it goes out. Now I'm going to show you, uh, this is very difficult, but I'm going to try, right? So here we have a 50 microamp meter with two more classic elements on as a dipole. Now this is going to be very tricky, stand by. So basically, being a dipole with two elements, vertical dipole in this orientation, if there was, if the, uh, this antenna system was create, acting like a normal vertical antenna uh, with a transverse electromagnetic wave, TM wave, it would be driving this meter. But what's happening with this meter is at this exact position, the electric fields are having an equal effect on both the dipole elements. And at that position, it's not driving this antenna. Now, if I change the balance of those electric fields, as you can see, then it, uh, it, it goes off its head. Now, I'm going to try very hard to move into the distance. And not only have I got to get the height right, but I've also got to think of my tilt to, get, to keep this stable. So bear with me. I'm now going to move away. Oops. What you can see here is now I've moved a fair way away. But there's clearly not what we would call a vertical TEM wave there. Now, let's go horizontal then. This is tricky for me, so bear with me. It's hard enough without holding the camera, right? <laughs> so, I've got to find this balance point, and also, yeah, there we go. Oh, hang on, I, I, I had a tilt there. I want to right, get this balanced. Hang on. Dear me, this is very tough to get right. Okay, so. Oops. Okay. Oops. Ah, oh, you bugger. Very tricky. The slightest disturbance, of course, changes this all out. Axis this way, axis this way, and axis this way. Uh, I'll try to get this zeroed again. Goodness me. All right. Ah, oh, you bugger. Okay. So, if I can maintain this, I'm going to move away. Oops. I got it wrong. There we go. Oops, I've moved again, funny. As you can see now, I've moved quite away. It's very tricky to keep this orientation exactly right. 
and that's hardly driving at all. I it's in balance though. Yes, right. In balance. So there's no vertical TEM wave, and there's no horizontal TEM wave. But what we do have is a longitudinal wave. A, basically, a longitudinal electric field pressure wave that they did used to call an LMD wave back in Tesla's day and Steinmetz and things. Longitudinal magneto dielectric wave. And that's why, even with this detector, notice it has one flat receive plate, then dielectric, and then the torus as its next plate. But the torus is in fact like two plates. So we've got plate one, the front is plate two, and the back is plate three. And these are all connected. The center of plate one connects through to the center of this torus. So if when this becomes positive, you should know from high school physics, if this has a positive charge, then its field lines will be connecting with this, and this will resultantly have a negative charge. But also, if this has a negative charge, its field lines will also be reaching across to the other side, which will have a positive charge. So in an instantaneous sense, when the electric field applies positively here, then negatively there, then positively here, from a current perspective, if it's positive here and making this negative, this is drawing from this. So current will run inward and through the center to try and get out to this more readily. But remember also that on, the, on this disc, uh, electric fields are hitting at all points. And for a, <laughs> sorry, I'll try and hold this. Uh, uh, for a TEM wave to, to drive this, let's say it's, it's vertical, if it was vertical running up and down, well, if a TEM, if a current tries to run down on here, uh, it's having to go every direction, right? It's uh, up or down. Uh, the sum of this value is not really going to change with respect to this. It's, um, it's just going to be a mess. So, but it, the electric fields have to be directly on, and these then behind it attract that through, and this behind that attracts that through, and then we drive through to the meter, uh, well, the rectifier and meter, and then to me as it's passed. And this is just a quick demo of it, it getting into VK5, South Australia. Now, conditions are not ideal right now. It's actually very noisy on the band. But um, if conditions were better, this would probably be banging in a good S7 from the kitchen bench. And last night, it was also making it beautifully into Western Australia. <laughs> so this is the highest energy state that I've been able to achieve on the 40 meter band so far. This is beating the electric dipole V3. So I'm on an exploration curve. To me, it's not all about taking every single one of my antenna experiments to completion. I'm learning and, and developing along the way. So um, that's what it's about for me. And it's also uh, running into Croydon. So this is in my neck of the woods down in the flatlands. Uh, I'm up in the hills, but Croydon is obscured by Mag Mount Dandenong between me and Croydon. Um, but uh, so this is delivering an uh, equivalent to MVIS as well. So there it is into Croydon. And now, uh, although the conditions are not ideal right now, it is doing a nice little trip. So, there you go. Yeah, with this one I am getting much higher peak-to-peak -peak voltages with this uh, special system. 
than I've ever been able to achieve on 40 meters. Now I can, and for quite some time, I've been able to do wonders at 80 meters, 160, 600 meters. As a matter of fact, the longer the wavelength, the better I can do with this type of system, which is interesting because they, the longer the wavelength is usually the more challenging the band. But it has been a struggle for me, although I do most of my tests on 40 meters, that you probably noticed that, is because that's where I'm trying to push the boundary and, and get greater efficiency on 40 meters with this type of system. And I have taken a different approach to the radiating element instead of just a, uh, a torus like this. This has a ball, a sphere, but this section is important and if you imagine it, if you're looking at this uh, spiral, the inside, when that's positive, the electric field lines would denote that this has to be negative. And again, there's this attraction. But a current can't drive both ways because they create a conflicting magnetic field. So, just electric field lines. Purely longitudinal magnetodielectricity. 7-3 and thanks for watching.